Well, welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to start working with 3D features and we'll create some test points. So I have a test geo database and we'll use create fishnet and we'll make our squares 10 by 10 and we'll have four squares. Create polygons, but we'll also create label points and then just OK to execute our create fishnet. Let's temporarily remove these layers and we'll rename our label points and then we'll add those to our data frame. So we don't have a spatial reference, so don't warn me about this in this session. So I rename my label points to test points and then we'll add that to our new data frame. And our points don't have a spatial reference, but we could in our data frame properties specify the map units in meters and our display units in meters. So let's assume everything's in meters in this example. And we'll add a field to our point attribute table for elevation or depth. So right now our points have x, y coordinates. We could also assign a z coordinate to our points. Elevation would be elevation above mean sea level and depth would be below mean sea level. For these points, our first two points, Let's give them an elevation of the object ID times 100. And for these other points, let's give them an elevation of object ID times negative 100. So now we can convert our points that are in two dimensions to points that are in three dimensions. And in order to do that, we have to have the 3D analyst extension checked on. So we'll check on the 3D analyst extension so we use a geoprocessing tool feature to 3D by attribute. We'll output to a new point feature class, and I named it test points X, Y, Z. And then we specify which field in our table has the elevation or depth information. And then we'll execute this geoprocessing tool. If we had lines, we could say which field has the elevation at the start of the line, which field has the elevation at the end of each line. But here we have points, so we don't use this to height field. So let's look at our two point attribute table. So arrange tables vertically. So here's our original test points, and here's our test points X, Y, Z. So you notice the shape is point Z, which means a point has X and Y coordinates. And a point Z also contains an invisible shape property called Z, which is what is the elevation or depth at each point. Let's delete our field because that's now contained in this Z attribute. And let's remove our original 2D points. We can visualize our test points in at ArcGIS Arc Scene. So if you go to ArcGIS, so all programs ArcGIS, so that was all programs ArcGIS. So all programs ArcGIS and then Arc Scene. But then what we could do is we could add our 3D points into Arc Scene and visualize them in three dimensions. We'll add our data, which is our test database, and it's our 3D points. And then under scene layers, if you go to scene properties, calculate the vertical, ag vertical exaggeration. And let's make it a little greater than that. Let's make it 0.1. So here are our 3D points. So zoom to layer. And we can zoom in or out using the scroll bar. Here are our 3D points. So let's make them a little bigger. So sea level is about here. Remember, we had two points that were above sea level, and we had two points that were below sea level. And then in arc scene, you can visualize these points in any direction, so you can twist them around. But basically, right now, we have these points, and they're in three dimensions. So then we'll exit out of arc scene. 
And let's make a layer for our points. Let's make one layer this point and the next layer this point. Actually, the third point. Use a definition query. So let's copy and paste, and then we'll do a definition query. Is the object ID equal to one? So let's call that point one. And then is the object ID equal to point three? So is object ID equal to three? And then we'll name this point three. And then let's just give it a different color. So one will be green and one will be blue. Okay, so we could use the near tool to get our distance between these two layers in two dimensions or generate near table or point distance. Those are all two dimensional distances. So let's just use generate near table. So take our point one and our point three and we'll create a table, table 2D distance, find the closest feature. And then if we look at that table, the distance as expected is 10. And we could double check that using the measure tool. So what's the distance from point one to point two? It's 10 meters. But these points also contain the Z factor. So we could also use a tool in the 3D analyst toolbox to get the distance between these two points in three dimensions, taking into account what is the elevation or depth of each point. So that geoprocessing tool is near 3D, and it will transfer that distance to our point one layer. For every point in this layer, find the closest point in this layer and calculate the distance in three dimensions. Distance in three dimensions is not 100 meters, it's 400 meters. Let's use the delete field tool and we'll delete all the fields in our test points X, Y, Z. So select all and delete them. And then if we open up the attribute table, we've got for every point, point Z, we might want to expose what is the X and Y coordinate of our shape we might also want to expose what is the Z coordinate of our point. So we could do add X, Y. That exposes from our point Z shape, the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, and the Z coordinate. The other thing we might want to do is just, we want to know what is the height or depth of every point. So for that, we could use the geoprocessing tool, add Z information. Now, if we look at our table, we just have the shape extract the Z property from our shape. And then that extracts just the Z property, not the X and Y coordinate. OK, so in the next video session, we'll cover lines in three dimensions.